Hey everybody, welcome back to the Cheapo Zone. Glad you could join us. Oh gosh, it's so good to have you here today. Something very special on the bench. I don't think you've seen one like this ever. Anning SZ08 for your cheapo pleasure. Now I don't go on a ramble too often on the channel. I'm just not one of those guys. But today I'm gonna ask you to gently, just gently, take that like button, put it on the ground, hold it in your eyes, in your gaze, and just, just look at it and just, just pick up a hammer or any big object and just whack the hell out of it and bang it and smash it and hit that like button like you've never hit the like button before because boy, it really helps the channel grow. I appreciate it. <clears throat> okay, let's get back to business. So here we've got the SZ08 from Anning, a name we know and have come to love in the cheaple realm. Anning is everywhere. They make auto ranging, non auto ranging, pocket, rockets, you name it, they do it all. And they usually do a fairly decent job. Um, today, the Anning S08, uh, something a little bit different. You'll see what I mean shortly. Uh, it is here. It is a non auto ranging 2000 count display multimeter. I know it sounds a little ho hum, but believe me, it's got some pretty neat tricks up its sleeve. S08 ships in this really basic box. It's brown, it's boring, it says multimeter digital. Um, that's about it, but it did arrive all in one piece, and that's from China. So, hey, surprised. Now, the main meter itself, ah, uh, look at that. Look at that. Isn't that nice? Isn't that interesting? But, but wait, hang on. What? No test leads? Yeah, there is no test leads in the box. Incredible. Oh, hang on. What? What? Whoa! Ho, ho, ho! Sweet! So we have a removable back cover. Oh my god, and there's the test leads. And look at that, they're full size test leads at that. Holy schmoles! And wow, look at, look at how thin that is! Whoa! Incredible, Anning, you have really uh, done something out of the box, I gotta say. Um, mmm, yummy! Wow, a measly 14.6 millimeters. That is it in terms of thickness for this Anning 14.6 millimeters. That is freaking thin! The park side we recently reviewed is 34.9, almost 35 millimeters. Uh, so look at that, I'm telling you. Whoa, this thing is just like thin, thin. Oh my God, what are you eating? Besides nothing, oh. Now, besides being ultra thin, um, wow, you could slip this in your pocket. You could slip this pretty well anywhere. Nobody's going to find out. It is really thin. Hey, you might even want to take it to visit your friend in prison. Not that you have friends in prison, but you never know. We also have a really, really overall nice color scheme. Um, the dial is extremely easy to read, very verbose. It's too bad we don't have an illuminated pointer as well. That would have been nice. But that being said, the white and the yellow on the black, very high contrast, very, very easy to see. Great job. Plastics are pretty good, actually. It's a, a little slightly higher grade plastic than I think we normally see. Um, it doesn't have any weird uh, mizzled, you know, or chiseled looks. Uh, a little something here, actually. But, you know, generally speaking, it's pretty, pretty decent looking plastics. Um, what do we got here? Please read manual for safety. Uh, we have a serial number on the bottom, and there is our battery compartment to AAA batteries is all it takes to power this little adding. That's a good thing. That storage area is also cool. I mean, you know what? You could actually put some, uh, you know, a little screwdriver, uh, maybe a boiled egg. I mean, you get the idea. You've got some room here to carry stuff. And because the meter is so thin, yeah, you can actually put a few things in there. Extra batteries, um, a Swiss watch. I don't know. It's got room. Awesome. And to access those test leads, you just simply have a clip mechanism here. Just push down on it, and voila, you are in. Woo, groovy, baby. Um, I'm loving this. I really am loving this. And look at the shroud. Look at the shrouding on here. 
It's a full-size shroud. So even though we've got this ultra-thin multimeter, they're still giving us a regular shrouded test lead. Oh, I love it, I love it. Oh my God, I'm excited here. Let's just pull out the other one now, shall we? Oh yeah, oh yes, very nice. Full-size test leads. Um, you know what? I gotta say, all things considered, for this cheap one, and I'm saying cheap, I spent 19 bucks Canadian uh, via eBay for this meter. Um, first impressions. Ooh, cool! The lead itself actually has a nice rubber inlay, so it's not just plastic. We have a rubber inlay here, which is giving us a really good feel, and we have that nice shrouded edge. Um, Maybe a tad on the small side, but you know what? They're pretty decent leads. What do we have for a cat rating here? 1000 volt cat 3 10 amp rating on those test leads. Beauty. And let's put this actually in the meter itself and see, oh yeah, look at that. So a nice full size shroud and it gets in that meter and it's in there snug. It ain't going anywhere, folks. Ooh, very, very, very nice. Of course, if you want to take use of that tilt stand, simply put the meter back on its housing, click it in and bada boom, bada bing, you have a standard typical multimeter with a tilt stand. Oh, it's so cool. Let's start off with a closer look at the selector switch, starting off the midnight or off position. Volts DC up to 1000 volts. Volts AC up to 750 volts. Frequency up to 200 kilohertz. NCV or non-contact voltage. High current amps, AC DC up to 10 amps. Battery check, 1.5 to 9 volts. Capacitance, up to 2 millifarad. Transistor tester. Diode and continuity. Finally, resistance, up to 200 mega ohm. Top left of the meter, we have our select switch, one touch hold, and the transistor tester. At the bottom on the far left, we have our high current 10 amp input. Beside that, we have our milliamp, as well as the battery tester input. Beside that, we have our common or ground. Finally, in the far right, we have our voltage resistance, capacitance, frequency, diode, and continuity. Turning on the display for the first time, and wow, you know what? It is not bad. It's not a chunky font. It's much more sublime, much more, um, I don't know, easy on the eyes. I do like what they've done with this basic LCD 2000 count display. And that selector switch, oh yeah. You do get that kind of annoying beep every time you hit a range, but... You're hitting that range quite nicely. No, I like it, I like it a lot. Pretty decent for a cheapo. So a little bit different with the SZ08. Um, in our voltage range, here we have the dial and that's for both AC and DC. To get to the AC, you just hit that select button and away you go. It does default to DC as well when you turn it on for the first time. So if you do a lot of uh, non-DC AC testing, it might be a little bit of a pain because every time you turn it off and on, you're gonna have to hit the select switch to go back into AC mode. We've had that uh, DC precision voltage standard heating up for about 15 minutes. Uh, 5.00 is what we want. 5.03 is what we get. Uh, no worries, it is still in spec. So accuracy in the voltage range, uh, it's not as good as most. We're talking 1% plus or minus five digits. So yeah, definitely not the most accurate multimeter when it comes to voltage measurements. As you can probably tell that Kaiweed's special is coming up very shortly. Uh, hence the Kaiweed's instruments in the background. Okay, what's next? Well, I think it's continuity time. Alrighty, here we are, continuity mode. Got the stock default test leads. I gotta say, I do love them. Uh, by the way, they are PVC, not silicone. But anyway, here we go. Three, two, one. Oh. Oh, it's a fail, it's a fail. Oh my God, yeah, that is just a total, total. Oh, let's hope the Pro Masters are better. Okay, here we go, Pro Masters. Oh my goodness, that is like night and day. Loud, latched. Oh, it is really loud. That is definitely loud. 86.6 decibels, maximum output in volume. Oh, can't even talk, it's so loud. Maximum output volume in continuity. Oh. By the way, I didn't want to miss the fact that we do have that visual indicator as well right there in continuity mode. Very nice. 
Sitting in high current amps right now, 5.0 amps according to the Unity Power Supply, 4.96 coming up on the Anning. Let's just bring it down, shall we? 3.77 amps, 3.72 for the Anning. Take it right down, 1.572. Coming up is 1.54. And how low can we go? Let's try 0.261. Coming up as 0.25. Of course, we have that uh, lower resolution right now, but there we go. Not bad, not bad. Next quick look at milliamps, sitting at 130 milliamps, 132 according to the adding. Let's just take it up ever so slightly. Remember, we only have a 200 milliamp threshold, and yet we're already maxed out. Let's bring it back down, and yet we are good. So 200 milliamps, that's it. That's all for the SS08. All right, it's AC testing time. There's the old wall plug. 120 volts coming right out of there. Now remember, this is not a true RMS multimeter. Uh, 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 sorry. No true RMS here, but hey, that's okay. Um, 121 volts coming up on the adding. So yeah, a little bit off once again, because it's not true RMS, but you know what? Hey, close enough for what we need. Let's look at resistance now. Here we go. Um, starting off with a whopping nine mega ohm. And okay, takes a little while to range. Let's go down to seven mega ohm. Five mega ohm. Two mega ohm. Yeah, it is definitely slow in resistance. Already sitting at 900K. Let's bring it back up to 100K. 200, 400, 600K, 800, and back to 100. All right, so in low resistance, at least, or higher resistance, rather, uh, it was definitely a little bit quicker. Ah, not bad. NCV mode is next. Now, unfortunately, it's not that great. Um, yeah, here's the 120 volts again coming out. Yep. Can we say? And unfortunately, on the wall as well, same idea. Uh, just really crappy. Oh, it's too bad. I was expecting something just because of the shape. It would have been so handy dandy for non-contact voltage testing, but in this case, it's a fail. Ugh. Hey, if you're going to travel with your SZ08 and you don't want to scratch your screen, no problem. Neat little trick. Look at this. Just take your body, flip it around. Bada boom, bada bing. Total protection. Oh, love it. Okay, quick diode testing time. Here we go, starting off with a standard diode. Are we gonna get that nice audible beep? No, we're not. But we do have a forward output voltage, 0.557. All right, here we go, starting off with the red LED. And we have illumination with a forward voltage drop. Over to the yellow, same. Under the green, illuminated, but no forward voltage. The blue, not nothing. And the white, yet yeah, no can do. So, hmm, three out of five in terms of Illumination, two out of five for voltage drop designation. Eh, kind of mediocre. Output voltage in dialed mode, a measly 2.24 volts. Uh, yeah, so here we are on the inside, teardown time. And wow, I gotta say I'm a little depressed. Uh, I thought things were gonna get a little bit better on the inside, but it just looks, yeah, well, okay, here we go. Flip side of the case, there's the interior, uh, just a cheapy ABS style plastic. Um, doesn't seem to be that great actually from this side. Uh, yeah, no shielding, no surprises. Uh, yeah, all right. Here we go, starting at the bottom of the PCB, the very bottom, we have our uh, two double A's, or triple A rather, uh, battery cell holder right here. Um, it's sort of just soldered on from this housing and then they've, uh, piggyback that to some wires here that make contact with the PCB. Uh, not an elegant solution, but it works and it's better than others I've seen in the past. So it, it, it's okay. Now, if we take a look at those input jacks, oh, nothing to write home about. Split variety, uh, we see this all the time in the cheapo realm, but uh, I mean, they are just cheesy cheap. Soldering job is okay, kind of ho-hum, but you know, at the end of the day, uh, nothing special going on here whatsoever. Uh, we have one tiny PTC right here. This poor thing looks like it's on its last legs. It's begging for forgiveness, but uh, there it is. And that is on the voltage side. Uh, in terms of <laughs> input protection, uh, we're talking nothing here, like bare minimum. Oh God. 
for the main current shunt, instead of a shunt, we actually have this tiny little, uh, you can see here it has a 10 amp, 300 volt rating, but is a polymeric SMD style self-resetting fuse. That's all they're giving us on the high current side. Oh gosh. Okay, moving up the board here, of course, is our buzzer. Um, main IC is Cobb. We have some programmable headers over here for factory calibration. And good God, look at this. That is our NCV right here. Holy moly cannoli. Yeah, that long protruding filament, which did absolutely nothing. Completely crap in terms of NCV. Oh God. So you wanna have to really be coming at it right on, straight at an angle. Otherwise you're not gonna get anything with this. So Ugh. anyway, let's flip it over, shall we? And oh wow, nothing on the reverse side. It is bare bones, good God. Um, that's the rotary selector tracks, obviously. Uh, they look okay, they're not greased or anything, but they are clean. And uh, yeah, so other side, and there's our rotary selector switch. Um, look at that, we don't even get balls. We don't even get balls with our Enning, that sucks. Uh, no, we've just got the um, plastic outer arms that make contact that give us that friction when we're switching ranges. But uh, oh, I really prefer some spring and balls. But anyway, it is what it is, right? One, two, three, four, five, six selector pads making contact with those tracks. Yeah, that's it. That's all. We have some soft touch buttons here, the zebra strip for the display. And that is all she wrote, folks. Whew. Okay, I'm going to put it back together and come back with my closing thoughts. Thoughts on the Anning SZ08. Oh, I wanted to like this one, I really did. But unfortunately, I don't. Yeah, what can I say? This thing is, well, it's just too murky. It does some really good things, but on the other hand, it just does not do a whole lot of good things. You know what I'm saying? It's quirky. Now, I really wanted to like this. I appreciate Anning so much for always thinking out of the box. They're always coming out with new innovative concepts. And really, I find very, very, very refreshing. Now, unfortunately, this one uh, just has too many things against it. Um, it's only 2000 count. It's not true RMS. Didn't bother with the capacitance testing today. It does work fine, but it's, you know, relegated to two millifarad, which is not that much. Frequency at the whole nine yards, it's all sort of ho-hum in terms of specs. Now that body, that chassis is oh so cool. I'd love to see this incarnation on a little bit more, uh, a meter that has more oomph to it, if you get my drift. Chatting about this one, if you're on the fence, well, guess what? Don't come over. It just ain't worth it. The Anning SZ08 gets a disappointing two out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Till the next one, keep on testing.